Hi, I'm Alex, owner and founder of Acorn Law, a law firm in Central Maryland that's dedicated to helping busy parents and families get their affairs in order. And today, as I'm just wrapping up, putting together a final portfolio package for some clients who I've been helping, I thought it was a good opportunity to make a quick video that really goes in depth into all the things that I put into an estate planning package. A lot of times clients come to me and they know that they want a will, but beyond that, they're not entirely sure what even should be in an estate planning package. My goal for every client who leaves my care is that they have a package that will be stored somewhere safe in their home that should something happen to them, either obviously death, but also importantly, something that incapacitates them, maybe a medical emergency. There's something like that happens, that their loved ones can pick up this package and quickly at their fingertips, find the most important information that they'll need to make that time go as smoothly as possible. Let's dive in and see what those documents entail. So the first thing that goes into this package is a will. And most people have heard of a will. It's the reason why most people come to see an estate planning attorney. But just to be clear, this is a document that outlines how you would like your worldly possessions and assets to be distributed after your death. It also, uh, if you have minor children, will designate who you would like to be their guardians. Now, another document that can be used for these purposes is a revocable living trust. And any estate planning attorney you work with will go through your goals and wishes to determine which of these, a will or a revocable living trust, works best for your goals. The personal property memorandum is really an extension of your will or revocable living trust. It'll be referenced in that document. And this is the way that you designate how you would like your personal property, your stuff to be distributed. So this is things like maybe important pieces of jewelry or artwork, family heirlooms, and you can indicate who you'd like those to go to. And the nice thing about having it in a memorandum is that you can alter this at any time and uh, just create a new one and sign it. And you don't have to actually revisit and revise your entire estate plan in order to change um, the personal property piece. This next section is titled personal information and can tend to kind of get looked over, but it's really important. And I'd like to highlight it here today. The refrain that I consistently hear from loved ones who are left to pick up the pieces in these situations is that they just don't have enough information, that they feel they're putting together a puzzle, but they're missing lots of pieces. So I really encourage clients to leave a detailed contact list of all the individuals who their loved ones are gonna to need to contact. I also encourage clients to create a really solid plan to communicate to their loved ones what accounts and services and things are out there that are gonna to need to be managed and potentially unwound. This makes such a huge difference because your loved ones are already dealing with so much trauma and grief. The last thing you want them to be stressed about is whether you have a Venmo account or how to stop the HelloFresh deliveries from arriving on the doorstep. Moving right along, I'm gonna address the next two documents together because they both relate to incapacity planning which I've touched on a couple of times in the video, but this is planning for times when you haven't passed away, but you're not able to manage your affairs yourself. The first document is the power of attorney, which allows someone else to make certain financial decisions for you. And the other is the advanced directive, which allows someone else to step into your shoes to make medical decisions for you. There's lots of important decisions to make on each of these documents, and they're really a key part of your plan. While we're on the topic of incapacity planning, I want to make sure to highlight this essential form so important for parents of minor children to have completed. It's the standby guardianship form, which is triggered in the event of your incapacity and allows the person of your choice to step in and make really important decisions for your children without having to go to court to get appointed beforehand. Now, in the state of Maryland, this form needs to be updated every six months. So it's important that you keep it refreshed and keep it along with your other documents where it's easy to be found. This next section, Memorial Instructions, is exactly what it sounds like. There's a form here that you can fill out to indicate your wishes regarding a memorial service. 
Now, many times I have clients tell me they don't really care to fill this out because they don't have strong preferences and they just like their family to figure it out. Um, but I do encourage everyone to at least fill out some basic um, requests here. And the reason for that is it really is a gift to your loved ones because in their time of grief, it may be difficult for them to make these decisions. And if you put down some preferences that may ease the path, you can always put in here that your family is free to alter it and then they can change it if they wish. So there you have it. If you've hung in here, now you know the secret of what is included in a basic estate planning package from Acorn Law. Now, of course, there are unique uh, circumstances that many families face, which may require different documents or information to be included, but that is the basics. If you live in Maryland and you are interested in getting this important work done so that you can have the peace of mind of knowing that if something were to happen to you, that your loved ones would have the information they need at their fingertips, please don't hesitate to go to my website and set up an appointment. I'd love to talk to you and I'd love to help.